Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is uh, part 2 uh, that we are going to take it now. Uh, you have seen that in the part 1 we have covered Azure uh, Active Directory information related to the basics introduction as well as uh, users and the groups management, how you can create the users, how you can uh, create groups etc and what are the dynamic groups and all. If you have not gone through that video, you can take the link from the description box and uh, you can take the look as well on the same uh, video. Even though the entire series link is also mentioned uh, for this Azure Active Directory begins to professional series. So now today we are going to talk about uh, Azure Active Directory licensing. So you just need to create first point here. Here we are going to talk it about that is Azure Active uh, directory licensing it's not the office 365 licenses so when we are talking about it's a microsoft azure active directory mainly sorry just clicked away okay so it's mainly available as a free service for office 365 and associated services so the basic service for the azure ad comes as a free service provider as we know that um, Microsoft Azure AD is basically working as a backend user identity management services for Exchange Online, Teams, SharePoint Online. So all these services are primarily hosted on Azure Active Directory. So for them, the free service can work, and you can utilize that free service where you do not have a privilege. Uh, or we can say the premium services that are offered as a part of uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory. Whereas this is the free service that has been offered by Microsoft. Apart from that, if you want to get some additional privileged services, you can either take P1 or P2 license for Azure AD. So in the simply simple terms, we can say that Azure AD is having two primary categories of licensing. One is the free and the another one is the premium category licenses. Whereas we have a two categories again, the P1 and P2. So the cost is accordingly, it's getting changed. Whereas in the P1, you will be getting a limited uh, premium facilities. Whereas if you go for the P2, you will get an additional uh, privilege services as well. So whenever as we know that what exactly the license concept is and why we use the license. So whenever you are taking a services from the Microsoft, you are taking any service from the Microsoft, you have to pay for that particular service and the payment, how it can be the measurement of all the payment can be identified. So for that, the Microsoft introduced this strategy on the base of licenses. So earlier what we have, once we have a server in the environment, we have a server based licensing and the second concept comes as a user based licensing. So here the Microsoft is using user based licensing for Azure AD. For Azure AD, we can take the license for the per user license and the per user license can be assigned to appropriate user once you procure the license or once you purchase the license from Microsoft you can assign the license to individual users. Admis uh, administrators can assign a management portal or by using shell and they can easily assign the license from the both way to any user account. These two licenses like the P1 and the P2, that license contains some additional uh, charges along with the privilege uh, or we can say the premium services. What are those premium additional features we can cover up in the upcoming videos uh, wow, uh, why and how to utilize the same and why we are going to take a premium or a paid services. So that we will cover up on that. So how to assign the license to the user account. Uh, let me just bring you my web portal so I can show you the same. Once you go to the Azure Active Directory, uh, let me just bring the home page. 
here go to the azure active directory and once i go to the users from here i can assign p1 or p2 category of license to any user account you can simply click on the user and you can assign the license to that particular user as well just click on the license and once you click on the license you can see those are the available license uh, in your organization once you click on the license you can see it to the alex what are the licenses you have assigned i have assigned the p1 p2 both to them because it's a testing environment but as per the uh, business requirement or we can say as per the organization requirement you can assign the appropriate license apart from that the p1 p2 you can see there's a subsections of those license premiums as well like the protection premium here you can see the p2 and the p1 whereas we have a azure rights management azure multi-factor authentication defender for cloud apps microsoft defender for identity and intune so these are the some additional associated services which are again are based on microsoft 365 as well as uh, azure active directory so those licenses you can also turn it on or turn it off Microsoft Cloud App, I will be uh, explaining you at a later stage what exactly it is and how we can generate. So if you want to assign or remove the license, you can also remove the license. If you want to change it, you can also change uh, the license like P1 or P2 or whatever license you want to give. The same thing you can also do it from the Microsoft 365 portal as well. So once you open the Microsoft admin portal and uh, if you go on the users, In the users, once you select the appropriate user account, you can also see that you will be getting a license details for that particular ID. Okay. You can see the license and apps are there. And from here, you also you can assign the appropriate license to particular user identity. If I click a scroll down, you can see all the available applications associated with this user identity like that you can see azure active directory premium p2 uh, whatever the services or we can say the applications which are associated with the their licensing you can also assign or remove it from this section as our the focus uh, section is azure active directory so you it's better you can see the management from here only here also you can see click on the license and you can view about all the available licenses from your uh, product wise or in your organization level so if i click on my home page or the overview section here you can see the left side license option is there you can again click on the same and you can see what all all the licenses that are associated in your organization or available in your organization that you can see it from here and each license obviously can have their own independent cost as per your procurement that uh, you have to assign it okay. assignment as i mentioned with you you can select the license assign and remove it for the specific user okay at the initial time we were discussing about the azure active directory what exactly the azure active directory it is basically a microsoft cloud based identity and the access management service so identity and the access management there are two concepts or we can say the identities whereas we are going to manage the uh, user identities or the user accounts computer accounts groups all those management it's known as uh, identity management whereas the access management is also comes that ensures that your permissions so permissions or the access to a specific resources that is also uh, handled by microsoft uh, or we can say a microsoft azure active directory that is also handled by identity and the access management services so 
as a microsoft identity and the access management service we have a microsoft azure and in azure gives you an opportunity to manage the resource accesses or it gives you or it helps you to manage the resource permissions as well so the entire both concepts integratedly known as identity and the access management whereas the azure active directory is a cloud hosted or a cloud based a microsoft solution that can help to ensure you can able to manage your user identities along with their accesses in the earlier we have a microsoft active directory which is based on uh, microsoft windows server even in the organization nowadays still it's is getting used most of the organizations are now moving towards the azure active directory in azure ad it helps you to manage both internal and the external resources so it's not limited to the uh, your internal organization resources you also have an uh, assign permissions or we can manage the access for internal as well as external resources we can see that uh, at later on how uh, basically it's managing whereas it's always uh, almost similar to the active directory like what we have in the normal windows id which is based on a server so it also working on the same pattern same way but even though it's giving a lot more additional benefits or we can say additional features and the best part is that you need not to manage this server the windows ad server which is known as domain controller so you need not to manage the domain controllers if you are using a pure azure active directory based environment the primary features we can say that there are three primary features that they have mentioned over here one is the multi factor authentication single sign on as well as the conditional access feature single sign on basically helps you to sign in uh, once and it can that sign in credentials can be utilized in any application which is running on your system so once you log in on your system your single credentials can through that once you enter in the system your credentials you need not to explicitly enter the credentials for the outlook for one drive for teams everything can be integrated with the same system credential and uh, similar as a lot more applications are there that you can integrate uh, as a part of single sign on so single sign on is basically helps you to avoid the multiple time sign in whereas you are using on a same machine same uh, user identity so all these benefits you will be getting with the help of single sign on whereas the multi factor authentication ensures that the additional layer or we can say an additional extra protection layer must be added apart from your credential while you are authenticating your identity so for example normally what we are doing we are entering a credential that is username and password so username and password these two are authenticated okay that is fine it successfully authenticated post that the mfa will comes in picture once the your username and the password is successfully authenticated in the normal era or we can say a normal uh, scenarios you can able to access the resources but once you integrate the mfa as a additional multi factor authentication layer so that will ensures that the additional data protection uh, constraints must be applied so what exactly that constraint is you have entered the username and the password and then it will gives you or whatever the options you have placed for example a phone call for example and one time password that is otp or authenticator app notification so all these the additional layer of security will be added over here you have to approve that from your smartphone you have to take a call on your mobile phone and approve that uh, request for the sign in same as you have will be getting an one time password on your mobile phone and then you have to enter it just like, like we are using in the banking net banking everywhere so that is again a two factor authentication the term is used the same thing is there here we have a multi factor authentication that will ensures the person who is trying to access the resource that must be must belongs uh, to the same person so that will helps if your password is leaked somewhere still the person will not gain access to your system 
so whenever it comes to you as a uh, password authentication or otp or uh, authenticator app notification you will be getting a notified if you are the right person obviously you can able to enter that uh, security protection layer uh, methodology for example otp and you will be authenticated and able to access it so that part uh, will comes as a multi factor authentication so azure active directory will gives you the uh, option where you can set up a multi factor authentication for user identities as well apart from that we can also in place uh, some conditional access strategies so conditional access are there for example i placed a multi factor authentication i placed a user credential obviously i have so i have added those security credentials but still we also have some additional conditional access situations are there that will again protects you or gives you certain conditions even your credentials are correct your multi factor mfa is again successful but the third one is conditional access policies what exactly it will do uh, conditional access policies what exactly it will do it will ensures the certain conditions that has been assigned by your organization or a system admin that must be fulfilled those conditions what exactly can be exist suppose my all offices exist in north america region i will ensure that my login location must not go beyond the north america region because my all offices are in north america all users belongs to the north america region so all of them all the ips or all the connections that are initiated to access my environment must be from north america whereas i can uh, place the uh, restriction for any specific country like country xyz we know that this xyz country is a suspicious country and we do not have any office over there i can block immediately block all the accesses for that particular country if any connection is initiated from this xyz country then this will be blocked automatically so that even you are giving uh, credentials proper mfa successful still this condition is not justified or we can say it's not getting fulfilled so you will not be able to log in in the environment or you cannot able to access the resources same as another condition my laptop is uh, must be updated with the antivirus if it is not updated with the antivirus that is again another condition so my access will be blocked i won't be able to access the environment so these are the type of conditions you can in place as a part of conditional access earlier we have in the windows active directory we have a group policies but group policies are not uh, refined at that level uh, or we can say or not flexible at that level what the conditional access policies offered in azure active directory we also have a multiple licensing options that we discussed uh, if you remember like p1 p2 even certain add on licenses are there as well as the free license for ad azure ad is also available so these three are the license primary license we have and as per our business requirement we can select the appropriate license as well so now moving towards in the same azure active directory and azure ad uh, whenever we are trying to access any azure first we have to remember the certain urls that is most important part you must remember what all are the different urls to access the appropriate portals the first portal is azure portal which is portal.azure.com the second one is aad.portal.azure.com that is mainly belongs to microsoft azure active directory admin portal you can directly open it as i have just given you this url earlier now you can understand this is another url as well admin.microsoft.com which is used for microsoft 365 admin center we have a microsoft defender for cloud app i will be covering this uh, as well earlier it was named as uh, mcas microsoft cloud app security now microsoft renamed this product as microsoft defender for cloud apps mdfc portal 
so uh, that is again portal.cloudappsecurity.com so that will helps to create certain some policies some um, uh, a lot of things that you can do related to microsoft cloud apps we can discuss this uh, once it comes in more details so here what we have we can see that the microsoft defender for cloud app admin center azure active directory and azure portal so these are the primary portals that you can use it these four portals so let's take a look one by one what exactly we will be getting and how we can open uh, that particular portals first once you go there and you will type portal.azure.com you can see it it will launch the window it will ask the username and the password appropriate authentication once the authentication is successful then only you will be getting a microsoft azure home uh, page so here you can see the various all the services like virtual machines everything that you can use it here once you click on more resources you can get all the azure information or related services or all the azure services that you can getting it over here general services compute everything is there application services sql database and this is the microsoft azure cloud portal it's not an active directory portal azure active directory you can just click on this azure active directory to launch azure active directory portal the another direct way is that you can open uh, azure active directory by aad dot portal dot azure dot com so that will opens the azure active directory portal or it will directly launch the same azure ad portal that we are basically launching it while we are clicking on this azure active directory so here you can see it uh, will gives you the base of your organization related information this is an overview page add user add guest user add group so quick tasks that you can see it from here user sign in you can check it out on which date who has signed in what are the users group so these are the shortcuts regarding your organization and once we click on all the services we can see it the azure back portal once again which is again based on your azure active directory services so here from here you can check it out all the services where if i click on the right left side azure active directory i will be getting the azure active directory portal uh, which we directly launch it from the services here as well i click on user i click on groups accordingly i can explore the components so always remember this portal name aad dot portal dot azure dot com for the azure portal portal dot azure dot com for all the services now the third one is admin dot microsoft dot com so that will offers you a microsoft 365 services admin dot microsoft dot com so that will gives you or open it will open the page of your microsoft 365 services from here if i click on show all i can see all the admin centers like security compliance as even as your active directory that is also available from here exchange sharepoint teams if i click on all the other admins we can see that all other admin centers also you can launch it from here always remember this url admin.microsoft.com okay the fourth one is portal dot cloud app security.com portal dot cloud app security.com so it's a microsoft cloud app security portal or we can say the older previous version of the name as mcas microsoft cloud app security so defender for cloud app portal will be open or we can say the microsoft cloud app the older version mcas that portal can be open with the help of that we can discuss about this what exactly this portal do what are these policies what are the session controls lot of things are there that you can do it so we can discuss about this at uh, later on in upcoming videos so defender for cloud app portal can be open by using portal dot cloud app security dot com it will automatically translate it to your tenant whatever the tenant name would be there it automatically add it as a prefix one more portal is there that is a common portal known as portal dot office dot com 
or we can say a portal dot microsoft dot com let me open it portal dot microsoft dot com once you open the portal dot microsoft dot com it will basically launch 365 admin centers and you can also uh, move to the any of the location for example this outlook word that you can open it whereas if i go on the portal.office.com it will gives you all the office applications if you are an admin privilege if you have an admin privilege you will get this admin icon as well you will get this admin icon as well from here you can launch your outlook word excel onenote onedrive yammer all these you can launch it all apps once you click on that you can see the all microsoft applications wherever you have access on those you can see it from here still i would like to add uh, this point over here so this is an office uh, default portal portal.office.com whereas uh, this is the cloud app security portal.microsoft.com that will also almost give you the same uh, view uh, that is your all admin center page admin.microsoft.com that is also gives you this page whereas to open azure active directory aad.portal.azure.com so these are all the portals that uh, you have to remember always whenever you have to open it uh, you can open any of them okay let's move forward and see what else we have over here okay so azure ad roles what are the azure active directory roles so azure ad roles are the predefined or are built in roles that are offered by microsoft azure and if you want to delegate some access to anyone to perform certain admin activities that role you can assign it to any particular user identity for example for the billing purpose you can assign a billing administrator cloud device administrator full access to manage devices in azure ad so it like that way you can assign an appropriate admin privilege or we can say we have a rbac role based access control privilege management that you can assign it to a specific user that this will control the permissions to manage the azure ad resources so these roles basically gives you an appropriate uh, privilege because you cannot give the full admin rights to anyone that's the reason microsoft azure gives you an a specific work associated privilege rights here the exchange admin it can able to manage all the exchange related administrative task where if you see the global administrator is there the global administrator role is basically most powerful role it has a right of do anything in the organization so the global admin is the top level role for entire uh, azure environment or entire 365 environment as well we can also define a custom roles if i want to define a specific privilege role that i can also define it but whenever you are defining those custom roles you must require a premium level licensing assignment of role you can simply click on the user account, account go to the assign roles and click on the assignment role but whenever you are going to assign a role you must be a having access right to perform that particular activity if you are an administrator you can assign the admin role to any other person if you are not an administrator you cannot assign it even for uh, or not all the admin privilege for example if you are exchange administrator still you cannot assign a uh, role for the teams or role for the other privileges uh, that is not a possible way you can only assign if you have a appropriate user role assignment privilege i will show you how to assign the role as well even though you can assign a roles uh, direct uh, with the specific identities always remember whenever you are assigning a role must work on the least privilege and for the specific time durations so that part you have to ensure that how it can do uh, there are the three base terms while you are delegating an administrating task to anyone just in time least privilege and just long enough we can also see that 
there is a concept of pim i will discuss this point uh, topic later on in detail what exactly the privilege and identity management pim feature gives you and gives you and uh, features and the opportunity to perform whereas from this prospect if you are assigning a direct role always make sure you just give the right to the person whenever that person is required minimum privilege you are giving them if the user required only a reset of password you must not give them access to create a user account as well give the appropriate right limited right to particular user whereas if the require user require a access for a one week then only give the access for one week not more than that if required for a one day give the access for the one day if required access for the four hours not give the one day just give the access for the four days so these things uh, you can do it whenever you are assigning a role to a specific user for the admin to perform an administrative activity here as what we can see that uh, we will take it out as a pim as a concept at later on so that uh, pim concept will do this work in an automated environment in first way or we can say an automated automate this uh, type of activity like just in time access how long least privilege least privilege you will define but at least uh, the other two just in time how much long whenever required even the required and approval so all these things can be uh, handled by uh, pim services so that we can discuss at later on so now let's take a look uh, how the access can or delegation for the role can be assigned to a specific users whenever you click on the user account once you open the user identity you can see the assigned roles the assigned roles is blank once i click on the assigned role you can see because none of the access are direct assignment here here you can see the eligible role it's nothing active assignment nothing expire assignment nothing so eligible it will comes once we go with the pim services but uh, before that click on the active assignment you can see nothing is there so what i can do i will click on the add assignments when i click on the add assignment i need to select an appropriate role that i need to assign it to this particular user identity for example compliance administrator cloud device administrator i clicked on that role cloud device administrator and the user who is selected once i click on the next permanent eligibility i can select it active or we can select it eligibility time duration as well like when its role start and when it would be getting ended we can we have option if i assign it as an active one you can see it permanent and the active eligible is only whenever you are going to explicitly you have to activate that particular role as well so if i assign uh, if i select the role as eligible then that person will be eligible to give the uh, get an admin privilege still user is not having an admin privilege every time user have to activate their roles explicitly then only user can able to access the admin privileges whereas if i uh, give them a permanent role with active one so that would role will be automatically activated i can assign the length duration for the assignment as well from here if i need for a one week i can just select it for this particular time okay okay i think i just taken it extend it let me go back enter the justification and then we can assign the role if i want to give the permanent access then i can keep it permanent if i want to keep it in the eligible then it would be eligible as well so let me assign it role and then show you so what exactly happened i have directly assigned that role so role will be available directly to the user if it is an eligible assignment then user has to activate their role whenever they have to perform a administrative privilege a few more concepts will comes in the form of pim services once we move on and see the pim uh, functionalities then we can see check it out the pim part as well it will be replicated soon you can see it now the direct assignment 
we can remove or we can update the role configuration from for a specific user as well if i go back on the my azure active directory once again from here you can see the roles and the administrators are mentioned over here once i click on the roles and the administrator i can check it out what all the available roles are there so these are all the built in roles along with their description it's mentioned what exactly it will do so a lot of roles are there you can just go through this role this list of roles and that list will helps you to understand whatever level of permissions you will be getting while you are uh, while ever you are assigning this role to someone if i just go back on the roles once again and i have given a role to a specific uh, role that is a device administrator or a cloud device administrator i think if i click on that we can see that who is having an active assignment so like that we can see it uh, from admin prospect so from here as well if you want to assign the role uh, you can directly select the member and this is another way to assign the role to a specific user if i select it i can assign it in that way so there would be a two ways you can directly go to the uh, roles and from the roles you can assign the role to user if you want to uh, assign a role a role from the user way you can also take it go to the user select the role and assign the role from there still you must have an appropriate privilege to perform that particular activity if you do not have a privilege you cannot assign the role to specific person it will comes in a minute or something it's taking a refresh i have already added so it will come in a one or two minutes so this is all about uh, the active directory license uh, azure active directory licensing and the azure active directory licensing roles was that uh, roles as well so apart from that i will be covering the other parts as well in the upcoming video uh, that is related to uh, delegative task or uh, some authentication strategies those things that i will cover in the upcoming video so this series will go long as i mentioned so lot of uh, videos will be on the way i will try to upload a video in a day so we can be on the track and cover up all the part as well if you uh, if you want to see the entire series uh, the link for the entire series is already in the chat uh, description box so you can take the link from there for the entire this series as well as the previous and the next uh, video a link along with the same So thank you so much for watching this and if you have not subscribed this channel please do subscribe it so that will gives you an updates whenever the up videos with uh, release on the same thank you so much